Hey, Church of the Ascension, this is Elise Massa, Assistant Director of Music and Worship Arts at our church. And I am here with my friend Ryan Mikey, who wrote with me the song Glory to the Father, which is a Gloria that we sing at our church. And we just wanted to share a little bit about how it was written. Ryan, for anyone who may not know who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you are, what your roles are, all of that jazz? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on here. This is fun. Yeah, my name Ryan Mikey. Uh, I am in the Detroit area over in Michigan. I uh, serve as the music minister and tech director of uh, the Anglican Church here. It's called His Church Anglican, and we're part of the Anglican Diocese of the Great Lakes. And uh, yeah, I've been leading worship for this congregation for a little over 12 years. Um, and and actually, I was just thinking about this. When uh, Elise came up here to, to help run the, the, uh, the songwriting retreat, uh, we had only been in our new building about, uh, gosh, like three months or something like that. Really? Uh, yeah, we were, we were given a, a beautiful building on many acres of land. Um, and this was the one of the ways that um, that we kind of settled into the building was gathering a bunch of songwriters and writing songs uh, for us and for others to use and worship in the space. That's awesome. I don't think I was fully aware of that. Well, in your church um, location is particularly close to my heart because my dad and my grandmother, her family, um, well, my dad's family, the mom, dad, his brothers, all grew up in Livonia. And so it was really neat to come back and worship at a church in Livonia um, and just be in kind of my, not stomping grounds, but maybe like, I don't know, running grounds, whatever you want to call that. So yeah, so let's chat a little bit of how this came to be. Um, I think this was the first United Adoration retreat that I helped co-lead or assist in leading. You were hosting it at your church. And just so people kind of have an idea of what happens. So when United Adoration runs a artist retreat, we invite artists from that area or whoever hears about it to come in. We usually have a packet of prayers and songs and hymn texts and sometimes visual art that uh, can inspire these artists because the idea of the retreats is to connect with each other and to commune with our creator in making new works. And so we were here to help facilitate that. And Ryan, I think um, you and I partnered up at some point and you said that you were drawn to the Gloria that was from the Kenyan Rite. So can you tell me a little bit more about the Kenyan Rite or about the African church and just our listeners or viewers, a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I've... Um... I and uh, my church community have really been blessed with our relationship uh, with Africa in general, uh, uh, many of the nations there. And, um, and the African church has been such a blessing in, in the way that they have partnered with us and invited us further into mission. Um, and so it's really precious to use some of their words. Um, the Kenyan Book of Common Prayer uh, came out in 1989, I believe. Um, and, and actually, uh, when I started leading uh, at uh, the church where I'm at, um, at the end of every service, we would say the, the phrase, all our problems we send to the cross of Christ, all our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ, um, all our hopes we set on the risen Christ. And, um, and I found out after the fact that that actually comes out of the Kenyan Book of Common Prayer. And, yeah, and they use hand motions with that too, if I remember. Like they really embody motion with their prayers and with their singing. So. Yeah, 
And you know, in in the Anglican style of worship, we've we've always held on to some of the, the like the call and response type of interaction with worship. But I feel like the African Church and maybe specifically the Kenyan Church takes it to another level, where it's not just like the person up front says it and then everyone else says it. Like there's like full body participation, like. <laughs> And, and so I was imagining that kind of engagement as we were starting to look at this, uh, this call and response, Gloria, because this was, was set up the same way where the leader would say, glory to the Father, and then the congregation says, glory to the Son. And I was hearing, like, uh, uh, my African friends' voices saying glory to the sun in response to that and it was like is there any way that we could translate that into our north american uh, tradition uh to where it could fit and we could reap some of the benefits of that um enthusiastic engagement uh with uh the words that come from scripture and from the worship within our churches oh that's so cool the glory itself is glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. Be glorified at home, be glorified in church, be glorified in Kenya, be glorified in Africa, be glorified on earth, be glorified in heaven, and then glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Spirit, forever three in one. Um, and I know when you, when you showed me that, I loved this um, expansion that was happening of where the Lord, where we were praying that the Lord would be glorified at home, in church, in Kenya, in Africa, on the earth, and in heaven. Um, I just loved that um, ramping up, <laughs> so to speak. And um, so, so when we started kind of musing and, and you were telling me about that and then I think I just had the guitar and started playing some simple chords and we landed on this verse that was like glory to the father and I think but I think we kept it to where it, kind of more like the at least the call and response that you and I are used to we did the echo so glory to the father and the next person glory to the father glory to the son and then that be glorified at home, um, we changed the chorus to be more uh, uh, relatable to our context, so to speak. So, um, so be glorified at home, be glorified in church. And then, and then you and I were really wrestling with this next line <laughs> on what to land on. And I know our church, because we weren't gonna say be glorified in Kenya. Of course we want that. Um, and we do. And so how do we use that in, in our setting? And, it, and it's a little bit of a mouthful to say, be glorified in the United States. <laughs> so, so what did, this is going to be a weird question. I know in our church, when we sing this song, we sing throughout our city streets. What do you guys sing? Because we kind of came to this place where after the retreat, the Lord kind of diverted the song and you've shaped it to your context and we've shaped it to ours. So what did you guys end up landing on? Yeah, we, we keep it a little more general um, uh, in that section after be glorified at home, be glorified in church. We actually say your light is shining out and over all the earth. Um, okay. I like, I love the way that, that you do it as well, keeping it in that kind of uh, expansion uh, mentality. We kind of just go big. <laughs> sure. It reminded me of almost like a folk worship song. So you have a, many folk songs and in folk tradition, they have kind of the basic structure, but then they change over time. So um, a folk song that some people might know with these words, and then others know with a different set of words, but they are basically, they're, they're from the same foundation and the same context, yeah. um, rather than an idea that a song is one way and this is the right way. It's more, this is kind of fluid and um, people can take it. Like I know there's a church down in Harrisonburg, Virginia, who sings this Gloria that we're connected to. We know the music minister down there and they might change the words a little bit 
to fit their context more. And I think that's great. That's that's the thing. Like in this day and age, we're so used to uh, songs being published on the radio, and then like that's the way it sounds. And even you see this even in uh, things that were ad libbed during the uh, recording process it, uh, that then end up, uh, say, like specifically in, in worship songs, they even end up in like the CCLI uh, uh, song charts where like this thing that was like, oh, and I'm just going to spontaneously praise the Lord. It's now like written out note for note with this is, you know, this is what this is what the song is. And so it's really cool to to hear the way that songs get formed to local contexts. And I love that there's, you know, within United Adoration, there's that freedom to do that because um, it, you might really need to sing about the city streets. You know, like that might be something that your congregation really needs, uh, needs to sing um, either because that's something that's on your hearts or it's, you know, something we aspire to <laughs> be present in the streets where uh, maybe in my context, my congregation really needs to understand that we are glorifying the God who is the God of the cosmic order. This isn't just my personal relationship in a closet. It is that. Um, but this is, our God is great and mighty. And, right. and we can we can celebrate that. And so I love that there's that freedom uh, to be flexible within the song. We haven't hugely chatted about the evolution of this song in a little while. So um, what are some of the things that you guys do outside of the words? I know you were working on some other um, round layers and layering. Anything like that that you're doing now? Yeah, I... Um, um prior to this retreat actually i had set uh the, the ancient prayer the false hilleron the uh gladsome wow. light um prayer to music and uh just interestingly uh they coincide very well they're not the same song but uh wrote them in the same key they have the the same meter and work really well on guitar um and so what I found in experimenting with the glory to the Father, Gloria, uh, was that some of the the pieces of the Fos Hilleron ended up really working well. And so when I started experimenting with different mashups, it actually really went in line with that um, glorifying the God of the cosmic order, the you know, the big yeah. worshiping the Lord. And so... Um, layers like worthy are you at all times to be glorified in creation um uh, um a giver of life and just layering that on top of what was already happening with uh, praising glory to the father um and so uh my imagination just kind of went wild and we don't we don't always incorporate it that way in our services it gets a little bit overwhelming if you have like five different parts and people <laughs> what part do i sing and yeah. but if we ever publish the song ccli will put all those things in for you right <laughs> and then everyone else they're gonna have to know you need five different music teams to really get all the layers <laughs> and then they'll come to our church and say we sing it wrong <laughs> But, and by the way, I do think it is, it is good to clarify for our viewers and, you know, many of the people I serve alongside know my bent. I mean, I was, I was, um, when I became a Christian, I, I, the music that I was handed was lyric and chords and uh, no melody lines written out. And so we basically learned everything by ear. And if it wasn't exact, that was no big deal. But, and there is a beauty to songs that when everyone knows them and knows the way to do them, how that kind of adds to a unity of worship and an ability to step in right away because you know how something's going to go. And so it's not an either or in that context, but just a, a both and. and. And I don't even like saying at this point different sides of the worship spectrum. It's just different points, right? Because sometimes when you say sides, it's like, worship wars but it's more just the points and the 
and how some songs have a fluidity and some songs are really meant to be done exactly how they're written. And that's a beautiful culture and a beautiful way to worship along with the others. So I just feel like we add that before we go off on <laughs> um, some of the ways that we enjoy to worship and don't want anyone to think we're suggesting that that is the right way either. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of a lot of what happens when we're talking about the flexibility within songs, often that gets codified in written out music in our congregation. And so yeah. you have local variations that then are beautified and um, not set in stone, but you know, made so that we actually can reproduce it. And, and, and that's, that's one of the strengths of um, the, very um, specific music traditions where different parts are written out on the staff and because then you can reproduce incredible, um, incredible things musically that may not happen in a, a very fluid performance environment. Absolutely. So I have a question for you and I didn't prepare you for this. So I don't mean to put you on the spot. It just came to me. Um, how do you teach this song at your church? And I don't mean like philosophically, but like, how have you taught it to them? Do you hand them the music? Do you talk to them from the front? And let me give you a little bit of an example. So in our end, um, one of the ways I'd love to eventually do this is kind of with some instruction from the front. And so you have your, we've done the vocal leader as the call and then the team with the congregation as the response. And then we've done the women as the call and the men as the response and congregation. Um, yeah, so men and women. I'd love to eventually do like kids do the call and adults do the response. But how are some of the ways that you've done this in your congregation? I love how creative you've been in exploring all this. You're giving me ideas right now. Um, Ooh, sharpening, iron, sharpening iron. And this is why I love talking to other worship leaders, why I think it's so important for worship leaders to also have a network so that we can trade ideas and not just encourage each other, but also like challenge one another. Like why, why don't you experiment with call and response things? Um, um, uh, I would say that uh, we probably have used this much less than you have. Um, but typically what I will do is just very, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll introduce it um, because we don't have a whole lot of songs that are call and response. Um, okay. and, and so I'll, I'll describe the way it is and then um, we'll just do that first section and I'll sing it and then I'll try and be just very charismatic in like inviting people pointing to them uh so typically it's like music team and congregation is the way we oh, do nice. it yeah. very cool i i like that because do you ever get scared that they're not going to respond <laughs> it's like an exercise in faith you're like okay a congregation do you have my back let's just <laughs> too yeah it's like oh my congregation loves me and follows me. <laughs> One of the most powerful moments for me as a music minister and a, um, is when only the congregation's voice is heard. It is just so, I mean, to sing a cappella and to get the instruments down and just for the congregation to hear itself worshiping, not reliant on the people with the microphones or to feel that, um, correspondence is the wrong word but to feel that camaraderie even of of like we're singing and you're singing and there have been times where I have been you know I'm going through stuff and so then something might move me and I can't sing anymore and I'm at the mic and then the congregation's voice not I don't want to say fills in as if they weren't there but the congregation's voice lifts me up so I love that. Maybe Church of the Ascension, we might do that <laughs> this Sunday um, where you guys are carrying it. And, but then I also do like, Ryan, I do like how we all come together on the chorus. 
I like the call and response in the verse, but then we all come together in the chorus um, to really lift up the height of this, of the glory of God being glorified in its expansiveness and in its just, you know, the Shekinah glory, so to speak. Right, absolutely. Um, I also, I, I resonate with what you're saying about when, when we're able to hear the congregation to sing, hearing the congregation sing, um, because often, you know, we've got, we've got floor monitors that are helping us stay in tune with the rest of the band. And so there's a lot going on where sometimes it, it can be a little bit hard to even feel connected to the congregation. And so in those moments when, um, when the congregation can be very uh, audible, um, it, it does amazing things for our hearts as, as the leader. And it's not about us, so, you know, we're, but it's such a blessing to, to feel that connection that like we collectively really are the body of Christ and we are singing our praises to the Lord. Uh, and to be reminded that I'm not performing right now and the congregation is worshiping the Lord. And that's, that's what's important. And speaking of voices, I don't, I don't know if you remember, but um, I totally lost my voice at the, um, at the retreat where we wrote this song. Uh, oh, that's right. And so uh, you were, you were, whenever we shared the song, you were leading it. And then I was trying to do the responses. And I think I was playing like hand percussion or something, which is- You're on a cajon, I think. Yeah, 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 playing cajon. And, uh, and so you'd sing just in the, in your gorgeous Elise voice. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> father. And then here I am and I'm like three octaves down. Glory to the father. <laughs> that just came back to me. It was like, wow, that was such an interesting, and it's amazing. Like even with no voice, uh, you know, we, we came out with a really beautiful song. That was a treat. Oh, it just goes to show you the Lord can be glorified no matter what state your voice is in. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Ryan, this is a question I like to ask any of the songwriters that we talk with for song stories, and we've touched on it a bit, but how would you hope that this song would edify our congregations and glorify the Lord and, you know, do the kingdom work? How would you, in a sentence or two, how would you hope that would be done? Um, I think two things. I think um, that I would hope that everyone who sings the song would be transported somehow to, to stand right before the throne of God, that we would see the Lord um, and, and be able to uh, just be enamored in his presence and, and praise him uh, with this. And then um, <clears throat> Also, uh, enjoy some of that uh, vitality of the, of the African spirit of worship. Uh, the continent of Africa has just an incredible voice of worship, and we don't get to hear it enough. And so even though, you know, this song was uh, written by two white people, um, the, the words came from our brothers and sisters in Africa. And, and so to, to really... Um, press into the the joy of worshiping uh, the Lord. Those are, those are the two things I think that would just be really powerful for us to embrace. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I think if, if I added a 2.5 of, you know, hope, it says, I love um, when worshipers of the triune God in their different cultures can experience and appreciate the cultures of their brothers and sisters and so i also would hope that this would give us a taste of that and for any of our brothers and sisters who regularly use the kenyan rite um if they were to worship with us they would hear that and it would make a, a um establish a little bit of home in a way and hopefully we would do it in a way that um, would be honoring for them and um, to just show that solidarity 
in unity in worship. And again, not claiming it as our own, that structure of the Gloria, that's not ours. Um, but it's, it is, how, how do you say it? it? It's part of the body of Christ of which we are honored and grateful to be grafted into. Um, so, well, thank you so much for chatting with me and sharing your heart behind this song. And I hope that as your church uses it, that you'll be blessed. And I know that we are blessed and um, many blessings on you guys as you continue in your corner of the kingdom. Thank you. And right, right back at you. Thank you so much for having me and to all of you Ascensioners. I don't know if you call yourselves that. Uh, God bless you. And, and thanks for worshiping the all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Spirit. Glory to the Spirit. Forever three in one. Church. <laughs>